Thank you very much, uh, George and Victoria and um, Stephen and, and everyone who's played a role in, uh, in, in organizing this, this gathering today and also for uh, the honor of, uh, of my being invited to join uh, Catherine and Sam uh, in, in such an important topic today. Um, given our day's title, the, I thought I would draw on Friedrich Nietzsche's uh, uh, great dictum, Nietzsche who probably affected Jung as, as much as anybody. You, you know how Jung spent much of the 1930s um, with an ongoing seminar on, on Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra. <clears throat> and I think if anybody, if he recognized anybody who had taken a journey inward and deep, um, that he could um, recognize as a kindred spirit as to what happened to him, Jung, in uh, the, that 1913 to 1918 period or so, uh, out of which came the Red Book and, and really his whole life work, uh, it would have been Nietzsche in the, in the 1880s. Um, so Nietzsche said, one must, in, one must have chaos inside if one is to give birth to a star. Something I think uh, Jung knew from within uh, at a deep experiential level. So we have such a, a, a huge topic uh, looming behind the day's focus, uh, trying to understand our moment in history. I remember I gave a talk to the Minnesota um, Jungians several years ago under the title Understanding Our Moment in History. And one of the analysts there, uh, Lynn Cohen, uh, came up to me afterwards and she said, you know, really, that's the, that's, that's the only real topic today. Um, and that was before the present administration. Uh, she, uh, she and I think probably most of us in this room recognized the, um, the depth of the transformational process and the dangers, as well as the promises that our, that our moment in history is, is pregnant with, and how much uh, alertness and uh, depth of discernment we are called upon to bring to this moment. Um, in some ways, this can't help but be a, a ridiculous talk before you today, because uh, the subject is so immense, and the, the uh, it's and it's so complex, uh, and the inevitable puniness of of the response, one could quite uh, justly call the title of today's exploration uh, "Through a Glass Darkly." Um, I remember once hearing. The, the wonderful uh, Jungian, Hegelian um, Jesuit scholar, John Dourley uh, from Canada. It was at a Jung Institute gathering back in 1987 on Jung's challenge to, uh, to religion. And uh, John Dourley said, we need to have uh, an altar erected uh, to Our Lady of Perpetual Uncertainty. Uh, as a kind of, um, uh, and I think there's, what he's saying is something, he said it uh, both humorously, but there's something very profound that he's pointing towards there because he's talking about um, our allowing or, and recognizing a new uh, numinosity that resides not just in having that certainty as the great axial religious awakenings did, whether it was um, you know, Judaic uh, monotheism or Christianity or, uh, or uh, Confucianism or uh, Plato in, in the Greek philosophical tradition, that sense of just unbelievable, clarified, uh, luminous, uh, 
um, uh, you know, revelation of, of a truth that had such certainty, such overwhelming certainty, that uh, it placed everything else in the shadow. And he uh, is pointing towards, I think, a shift in the contemporary psyche, let's call it uh, something like the postmodern mind, if we can open up that postmodern definition to encompass what I think is the nobility uh, of our era, as well as its, its uh, uh, problematic qualities. And that is that recognition of um, the value of not knowing, of, of uncertainty, of recognizing the, the multiplicity and complexity of factors, the, the paradoxes that run all the way through the essence of reality, uh, <clears throat> To open ourselves to that has now, um, in a sense, there's a kind of numin there's a kind of sacredness that is that is now residing. It's in that it's part of the underworld journey of our time is to be able to open to that. 